Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. We do that by spending a little time together in the Word of God and in prayer. I hope that you're finding these helpful and that every day you're taking a few moments to read one chapter of Scripture together with me. And so, most recently, we have been working our way through the book of Hebrews. And today, we come to Hebrews chapter 6. And so, my hope would be that at the end of this time together, that you would take a few moments and read the whole of Hebrews chapter 6. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a, a brief portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 13 through 19. And so, if you have a Bible handy or you want to pull it up on your phone app, I would invite you to join me in Hebrews chapter 6, beginning in verse 13. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all arguments. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. It's kind of an interesting chapter. Much of this book of Hebrews um, can be a little bit confusing, and we might struggle to, to understand some of it. So here he talks about an oath. And I, I'm guessing most of you know what it means to, to swear on an oath, right? This, this idea that we make a statement and then we swear on something that makes it somehow more truthful or believable or certain, right? The place that we most commonly see this in our culture today is in a courtroom. When someone swears to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth by placing their hand on a Bible and saying, so help me God. So the idea is that we are assuring others that we are telling the truth by swearing on something greater than ourselves. This is a way of confirming that what we are about to say is completely and undeniably true. But with God, there was nothing greater that he could swear by. So we hear here in Hebrews that he essentially swears by himself. He swears an oath on himself because God will never lie. Then the author uses as an example the patriarch Abraham. God made a promise to Abraham that he swore on an oath that he would one day have a great nation of descendants even though he was aged and his wife Sarah was also very old and unable to have children. Now, of course, we know that God's promise was true to Abraham. We see the nation of Israel that exists to this day. And so, all of this was meant to remind us of two things. The first is that Whatever God speaks is true. God is never a liar. And secondly, that he always fulfills his promises. Now, this is where it becomes important to us. Because God's nature is also unchanging, right? The scriptures tell us that he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so his attributes 
at that time are still his attributes at this time. And what he was true to then, he is still true to now. That means that in the same way that God was true to his word and faithful to his promises to Abraham and to every other situation in the past, he will be the same to us today. And so that means for us, for example, Jesus promised that he would never leave us or forsake us. This is still true today. Jesus is always there for us. And he promised that he would send a counselor to be with us, his Holy Spirit to walk with us. That is still true today. The Holy Spirit still abides with us in our lives today. But perhaps most of all, he promised that all who believe in him and who seek forgiveness of sin in His name will receive the promise of eternal life. That promise will never change and it will never fail. So, we can live our lives firmly grounded in the hope and the promise that He is always with us and that there will always be salvation and eternal life in His name. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank You that Your Word is always true and it is unchanging, that Your promises are always faithful and they always will be. We can look back through the scriptures and see all the ways that you fulfilled your promises, all the ways that you stood true to your word. And it gives us the confidence to know that even to this very day, the promises you make to us are yes and amen. They are true and they are solid and they are trustworthy. And we can build our very lives on them. And so we thank you for that promise, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>